Oh my, that's a long, long thing. Look, I'm 84 years old, okay? So I've been at this in some way for a long time. In my life, it started in a course that I taught in 1966. I had come to MIT, back to MIT. I'd been a student there. I'd gone to Princeton to work uh, with a man named Robert Dickey, very intelligent, marvelous man who invented you know, a lot of ideas. And I came back, they invited me to come back to MIT, and I started a group at MIT in cosmology and gravitation, uh, an experimental group. And uh, well, that group was going, and in about 1967, in fact, exactly in 67, they asked me to teach a course in general relativity. Now, prior to that, general relativity had been taught mostly in the mathematics departments. And what happened is now, all of a sudden, because things were be cha being a change, gravity was getting more real. <clears throat> People were able to do experiments. It became something that you taught in the physics department. And so they wanted to have that. But the trouble is, I didn't know any general relativity. So I had to lie, make a lie, say I would teach it. So of course, I had to catch up very fast and learn it before the students. Now, that, the, the, I'm telling you the story because there's a moment in that story where it happened that I had to invent something that made LIGO. And that was, uh, the, there had been a man named Joseph Weber who had been doing experiments of his own with big bars. And by the way, in Italy here, you had a lot of very good groups doing what's called Weber bar detectors all through the 60s and 1970s. They didn't see anything. Weber saw, thought, thought he saw something, and that was not right, it turns out. So by 1972, it, it was very clear that he hadn't seen anything. But in, when I was teaching my course, I had to explain to the students, they wanted to know, how does a Weber detector work? What's a gravitational wave? And I couldn't figure out how to make an explanation that was sensible to the students about a Weber detector. So I sat for a weekend thinking how I would do it. And the most simple thing I could think of was here, what a gravitational wave does, it stretches space, it pulls it apart and puts, pushes it together. So now what you do is make a thing that takes light and measures the time it takes for light to go this way and then back again. And the gravitational wave, as it comes, stretches that space. So it'll take a little longer and maybe a little shorter, but it'll change the time that it takes light to go. And I thought, that's a nice, and you could do that calculation very easily. It was a simple calculation to do in the theory. So I gave that as a problem to the students, and we worked it out, and almost all the students in the course got it. Okay, so that was the end in, in 67. And by 72, Weber hadn't seen anything, and I thought to myself, yeah, let's go back and look at that idea and see if it's an idea that you can make something out of. And that's when I sat in a little room at MIT for a whole summer and did the noise calculations and began to realize that that technique of timing light through a gravitational wave looked like a very effective way of, of doing the measurement. And that was, for me, the origin of LIGO.